Hello folks, this is Mike, PC31, the Vinyl Policeman, uh, coming from a very hot and humid south coast of England at the moment. It's been a really hot day. They're saying it's the hottest one since records started, apparently, in the UK. Don't know if that's true or not, but it's, it's very hot. Um, this is a quick video, and it's uh, in response to Rod, the happy hippie vinyl guy, a uh, brilliant Rod, who's done a thread, your 12 favourite front men or front women, front people. Um, not necessarily your favourite artist, anything like that, but as, as front, the front man. Um, before I do that, just a very quick mention. I want to mention a bit of VC love for Doug Anderson. And uh, Doug Anderson has made only two videos so far, but I'd really recommend going across and having a look at his, uh, his introduction one. It's, it's really good. Uh, Doug's, I think, on about 15 subs at the moment. So, uh, so he's very, very new to the community. So please um, go and support Doug, Doug Anderson. There we go. I've also got a thread going through at the moment, which I posted over the weekend, and that's to select one record label, one label, and to just show five artists, five different albums. Um, it's a bit of fun if you jump on that, folks. I'll do a link below, but that'll be great. Anyway over to Rod's great th thread. And uh, when Rod posted his top 12 with a few honorable mentions, I thought, oh, that sounds like a really good idea. That's quite an easy one. Um, it's really not. When you start thinking about who you've seen and uh, all the different people it could be. So I really focused on charismatic front, front men who really excite you in concert, who can bring you to tears, can really stir your emotions. Um, inevitably, mine out of the top twelve is twelve that Rob's looking for. How out of my twelve, um, I've seen ten of them in concert. Some of them multiple times. There's only two I haven't actually seen in concert. Um, so it's the ones who have really got that X factor. Very charismatic, very exciting, stir your emotions. Those, those kind of people you really focus on stage all the time. A few honourable mentions before I start. I think Rod had about 300 mentions. I just had so many who didn't make the list, but Johnny Cash, fantastic. Neil Diamond, I've seen Neil Diamond. He was really brilliant. And the poor chap's got Parkinson's uh, disease. And so very sad, but an absolutely fantastic musician, singer, songwriter, great in concert. Um, Jimi Hendrix never made my list. Elvis Costello, who I absolutely loved, didn't make the list. Iggy could have made it, but, but he didn't. Uh, John Lydon, could have made it, but didn't quite make it. Anyway, those are the honourable mentions that could have easier sneaked in, but they didn't. So, number what I'm also going to do for speed, I'm just going to some. I'm just going to pull from places around me just quickly. So, number twelve in my um, front people. Um, number twelve is an artist who I wouldn't naturally gravitate to. And I only like the first three albums this guy was involved with. The rest of the albums, I haven't really got a lot of time for. But I saw this guy in concert, 24th of December, 1975, at the Hammersmith Odeon in London. And it was just one of the greatest concerts I've ever seen. And it was magnificent. And that was Philly Mercury. And this is my favourite album by Queen. As I say, for me, Queen, they're all about the first three albums. And then after that, no, not for me but um on that night that christmas eve freddie mercury was absolutely at his peak i think he was a phenomenal front man queen played some incredible tracks the show was magnificent um it was christmas eve so you know the spirits were running high and uh, the drink was flowing but number 12 for me freddie mercury a lot hinging on that that night for me so number 11 on my list now one of the one of the things unfortunately no women have made my top 12 and that's not to say they didn't get close and um, there's and there are a lot of women like Alanis Morissette I think is fantastic really good um front person front lady Joan Armour trading I've seen several times really good Chrissy Hine I've seen Chrissy Hine really really good but the only ladies who make my top 12 number 11 is this is uh this is my only multiple one so i know this is cheating rod sorry 
but I love these uh, folks so much, their voices. But Fred Schneider, Cindy Wilson, Kate Pearson. I think as front people, those three are just absolutely fantastic. I think they're so quirky, they're so original. Um, I've, this is one of the acts I've never seen live, which is a big regret actually, but I've seen lots and lots of footage of them on DVD and YouTube. And uh, as three front people, fantastic, great voices live, great show, superb. So number 10 for me. Number 10, I move across here, and it's the mighty Aussie. And uh, this is Aussie's ninth and final album with Sabbath, 13, made in 2013. But uh, those first eight, eight Sabbath albums in the 70s, just fantastic, really fantastic Aussie and, and, the, and the band. Um, I saw Sabbath two or three times, three times I think during that period, and I was always blown away by them. Ozzy was always a, a spectacular front man. You couldn't take your eyes off him. His voice for a heavy rock band was really cutting and it just fitted the whole thing perfectly. And he's just such a good front man. So, so brilliant. So Ozzy is number 10. So number nine. Number nine for me is let's show uh, uh what i'm gonna what i'm gonna do folks because um as we get lower and lower and um the people become the front men become more and more obvious you've probably seen the albums before so i'm going to show some interesting things like bootlegs and things i've got and here's the first bootleg i'm going to show and it's uh, from peter gabriel and uh after peter gabriel left uh Genesis after The Lamb in 1974. He obviously went solo and uh, produced some great albums. Melt is my favourite, the third one. But I, I've seen Gabriel, not in Genesis, unfortunately, but I've seen him solo several times. And really great front men, especially in those early solo days. He was just so active on stage, um, just all over the place. And the voice was superb and really innovative on stage. He was excellent. So number nine for me, Peter Gabriel. Number eight for me So number eight for me I should move over here and I should show you what shall I show you? Uh this guy twenty four studio albums um lo longevity incredible singer songwriter written so many songs over his time and this is the arena rock years ray davis ray davis also appeared in rod's list as well uh, which i was really pleased about i've just pulled out this album because i say this is right in the middle of the arista arena rock period so the shows the kings were putting on were just huge rock shows and ray davis was fired up and when you see some of the um some of the shows from that time on youtube and dvd it, He's a fantastic front man. He is so fired up. I've actually seen him solo um, in later, later years, but um, never saw him during this like, peak period, and that's a bit of a regret. But uh, but I have seen him. So number eight for me is Ray Davis. So the second and final artist that I've never seen, I haven't seen live. Um, number seven is. Scott Bourne, Australian, Bon Scott. And this, this is the first ACDC album that was released internationally. There were two Australian ones before this. But um, Bon Scott with ACDC, 1974 to 1980, when he unfortunately passed away. He was only 33, but what a voice that guy had. I mean, fronting a rock band like Ozzy. I mean, Bon Scott's voice was absolutely immense. Thought Brian Johnson from Geordie did a fantastic job I mean, such a hard act to follow Bon Scott, but Bon Scott's voice, just completely immense. Such a great front man. Never saw him, would have loved to have. But Bon Scott, number seven. So, number six. We're getting to the money end now, guys. Uh, and ladies. And let's show this. So, number 
six on my list of uh, front men. Noddy Holder. Saw Slade way back in the day, around about 1970, 73 or 74. I'm not, not, can't remember actually, but it was right back at the peak. And um, I remember as a really young kid, desperate for this film to come out, Slade in Flame. And when I went to see it, it was panned by the critics and it didn't do Slade any good at all, but I thought it was absolutely fantastic just seeing Slade up there. But Noddy Holder's voice was probably the first thing in music that really kind of grabbed me. And uh, when I saw him as a front man, that, the voice was absolutely immense, absolutely huge rock voice. And um, it's, they still talk now, actually. I, th I think Noddy's about 72 now. But there is just a tiny bit of talk that it may not be the end for him performing. I, I don't know how much speculation there is in that. I don't, don't think Slade will ever get back together again. But um, but wouldn't it be great to see Noddy out and about again? But he's number six for me. Neville. Neville Holder. Noddy Holder. Absolutely fantastic. So we now get into the top five. So... Again, I wanted to not show standard albums if possible. I wanted to show a few kind of odd things. So number five for me um, is Joe Strummer of The Clash. And uh, I saw Joe in The Clash a couple of times and he was fantastic. Absolutely. But you just couldn't take your eyes off Joe Strummer. Everything about him, he was pure, pure punk royalty. Just like Keith Richards is to me in rock and roll, there's nothing insincere about him. I mean, everything is just totally honest and it's just the way they are. That's what Joe was for me. And um, this, is a, this is a bootleg, which has now come out actually officially, and I've got the vinyl copy of this, Acton Town Hall, West London. And this was the famous one for the Firefighters Benevolent Front. Friday, 15th of November, 2002. So this was just before Joe died. This is the one where Mick Jones comes on stage for the encore. And uh, this came out on vinyl, actually. I say it's been bootlegs, but it came out on vinyl on a record store day. And I've, I've got that behind me there. But what a great show. And the very, very last show that Joe played, 22nd of November, that was the 15th, a week later, the very last gig that Joe Strummer ever did Liverpool University, 22nd November 2002. This is a bootleg called Bringing It All Back Home with the Mescaleros. And uh, so I'm really pleased to, to have that one. The very final gig of Joe Strummer, 1952 to 2002. He was only 50 when he died. Such a massive miss. Joe Strummer. My fourth one is, uh, and I'm going to show another bootleg, is uh, Paul McCartney. And uh, I've seen Paul McCartney a few times and um, I actually saw him in 2018 in Liverpool and uh, the Echo Arena in Liverpool, 12th of December, just before Christmas. And uh, so 2018, four years back, so he was 76. And just the guy was fantastic. He did two hours, 45 minutes, sang all the songs in original Beatles keys that he was doing as a young man. Um, his voice is not as strong as it, it was, obviously, but the but the notes are still there. The energy, just the performance is there, and it's just absolutely fantastic. This particular bootleg, which I got a few weeks after seeing the show, is brilliant because it's got the it's a three CD, um, three discs, and it's the whole show, two hours forty five minutes. But you've got um, also the sound check, which I think is about fourteen, thirteen, fourteen tracks. So you've got the whole sound check on this as well and it's really good quality so i was so pleased to get a hold of this so paul mccartney for me the fourth greatest front man can't take your eyes off the guy absolutely brilliant my third one is i thought i'd show a live album because of who he is is the late and very 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 great david bowie so Santa Monica, 1972. Um, lucky to see Bowie about five times, I think it was in total, on uh, on different tours. So different sort of different uh, set lists and various things. This particular one, I mean, hang on to it's 1972. Hang
Hang on to yourself. Ziggy Stardust changes. Life on Mars. Five years. Space oddity. Width of a circle. Queen bitch. Moon, moon age daydream. John Money dancing. Waiting for the man. Gene Genie. Suffragette City. Rock and, rock and roll suicide. Oh my God. What a great album. Absolutely brilliant. So the late and absolutely brilliant David Bowie. 2016 he passed away. God, six years ago. Unbelievable. Um, so my number three for the best front man, David Bowie. So, top two. Top two. So my second greatest front man. And as, and as Rod emphasises, it's not, not necessarily your absolute favourites, not necessarily your favourite bands, things like that, but the best front people, male or female. Um, and my number two, which he's in here, Rod, Mick Jagger, Michael Philip Jagger. So I, I share a fast name with him and I share a birthday with him. Not the same year, but 20, 26th of July. So Mick's birthday's coming up soon. And uh, the reason why I'm showing Bigger Bang is because I've seen the Stones several times, but uh, I on this particular tour, my wife and I saw them I think about five times i'd have to double check but we saw them a lot of times on this tour and so i grew really we grew really attached to this album bigger bang i think it's a fantastic album really underrated it's one of my stones one of my favorite stones albums actually but what could you say about jagger as a front man i mean just phenomenal absolutely phenomenal front man and even when you see him now it just uh, just staggering the energy the excitement he generates and um Sometimes his voice is criticised, but I really don't understand that because I think he's got a brilliant rock and roll voice. It's superb. Number two, Mick Jagger. So we've now got the big number one. We've now got the big number one, and I'm going to show a bootleg for this one as well because I've shown some of his other albums so many times. So my number one frontman is Bruce Springsteen. And this is a, a three vinyl set from Nassau. Um, I've had this for many, many years. Badlands, Two Hearts, 10th Avenue Freeze Out, Darkness, Independence Day, uh, Promised Land, Out on the Street, Prove It All Night, Cadillac Ranch. So this is this was at the time of the, uh, of the river. But Bruce Springsteen, what can you say? 20 studio albums, um, he's, he's 72 now. Just a fantastic artist. Seen him many, many times. I've, um, my wife and I, we've been across to the States to see him at Giant Stadium. We went to Italy to see him and he played solo. And I think that was the Devils and Dust tour, but he was literally on his own. And we were about four rows from the front. And, the, the, and there was a point in the concert where all the Italian audience ran forward and we did as well. And uh, I was just a few yards away from the great man, which is the closest I've been. We've seen him numerous times in the UK, and uh, he's gonna he's on tour in the UK again uh, next year. So we'll we'll be seeing him at least a couple of times next year. But uh, so Rod, my number one front man, Mick Jagger number two, but uh, Bruce Springsteen the boss, number one. So jump on Rod's thread. I mean, it's really good fun. It really gets you thinking. Actually, my list changed so many times, but uh, really good fun. And remember, Doug Anderson to check out. A couple of videos on at the moment, but check out Doug is well worth. Please sub to him. Okay, folks, speak soon.